the the fruit of the spirit, beginning with talking about the fruit of the spirit. And that is all about what God's spirit gives us, but we're responsible to help cultivate it and make it grow in our life. And Joyce, we hit some really good stuff last week, and uh, you're going to help us finish a long list of all the rest. <laughs> yeah, I started to say, I told you earlier, with no way are we going to get to all those. <laughs> last week, if, if you missed it, we talked about um, peace, patience, and humility, and it, it honestly, it was kind of ouchy. Yeah, it's <laughs> it painful. A little, a little painful, but Jay, just for you. I we've, see. We've got some guacamole I see we've got chips, guacamole. Because <laughs> she talked about being an avocado. That's her fruit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, so we have six fruit left, we and do. I can promise you we're not going to get to all we of them. We do. We have love, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Ooh. and eek, self-control. Mm. Well, I have something funny we want to show the people. My youngest grandson, I have 12 grandchildren, and my youngest one, a little over two years old, his mother is teaching him the fruit of the Spirit, and you have to look at this and see what he said. Can we say the fruit of the Spirit? Love, self-control, joy, self-control, peace, self-control, patience, self-control, kindness, self-control, goodness, self-control, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, faithfulness, and (laughs) self-control. I think that's hilarious. Every one of them was self control till he got to self control, and then he wouldn't say anything. So. Isn't that the way it is with self control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. I, you actually have to use it, then yeah. it's like, nah. I'll tell you all about I'll it talk until about I have it. to. I thought it was funny. At two and a half, he already knows every one of them takes self control. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> that, that is so fun. I, I love to see the way children. Um, assimilate these things because they really pick up on a lot of stuff, but that little twist is always very fun. Yeah. And if I was going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, I might do the opposite and just leave out self control. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend it doesn't list. In yeah, the list. Yeah. yeah, it is pretty important though. You, you talked before, Joyce, about how the, the bookends yeah, I was of, gonna mention of that. love like, and self control are you so start, important. I think all of the fruit of the Spirit comes out of love. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you're not going to do any of the rest of them if you right. don't love. But then self-control, the last one, is like what holds them all in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like sometimes love tells me to be kind, mm-hmm. but I have to use self-control to be kind. Yeah. yeah. And love always tells us to be humble, but we sure need self-control for mm-hmm. that. So, and so yeah, the baby's I, got it right. <laughs> I, consider uh-huh. the, I consider the two of them to be two that we need to talk about a lot because yeah. really the rest of them, if you've got the love and the self-control, and you have a desire to do the rest of them, it's pretty easy. Yeah. (laughs) Let me ask you this question, because a lot of people talk about the gifts of the Spirit. You know, we... We all either want the gifts or we're afraid of the gifts because we don't understand them, right. whatever that might be. But I think it's really important to distinguish between the two. So we're going to start right now with a, a little clip from your teaching that just helps explain this so well, the difference okay. between the gifts and the fruit. Take a listen. In God's kingdom, we are not known or applauded by the gifts that God gives us. But what God looks for is fruit. He looks for character. He says you will know them by their fruit. The world admires gifts. Boy, if you can do something that the world thinks is great, you're in. But God admires character. Gifts are easy, they're given. We're not better than one another because we can do something that someone else can't do. We must learn to live deeper. Either make the tree sound healthy and good and its fruit sound healthy and good, or make the tree rotten, diseased, and bad and its fruit rotten, diseased, and bad. For the tree is known and recognized and judged by its fruit. Fruit. We need to learn how to be fruit inspectors. We need to live deeper. We need to look deeper at the people's lives that we're around and the people that we get hooked up with. You know, a peach tree, you know that a peach tree is a peach tree because it bears peaches, right? A peach tree doesn't go around with a megaphone yelling, I'm a peach tree, I'm a peach tree, go look at me, I'm a peach tree. Yeah, well, where's your peaches? (laughs) 
Well, that's what happens with Christians. Oh, I'm a Christian. I say hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I cast out devils. Whoa, -ho, I'm a Christian. Yeah, well, where's your fruit? You're known by your fruit. Are you helping anybody? Are you patient? Are you loving people? Are you a giver? Are you quick to apologize? Are you gentle? Are you faithful? Are you sticking with something and refusing to give up on anything? How do you treat people? Those are the things that are important to God. Somebody say amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that you went deeper yeah. with the fruit of the Spirit because it's easy to run through them love, joy, mm -hmm. peace, patience, kindness, and just, just kind of gloss over them. But you got into forgiveness. I mean, it, the things that come out of the fruit are the things that we have to do. So when you're talking about living deeper, I, I think that's so important and not just seeking after those gifts, right. but being who he wants us to be. I went through a, a, a phase. I was in the church when there was a phase going through about the gifts of the Spirit. And everybody wanted to know what their gift was. Mm -hmm. What's your gift? What's my gift? Let's compare gifts. <laughs> and God just began to show me that it's, you don't know people by their gifts. Right. I mean, my gift to teach and preach is a gift that God gave me. You know, so if you read in Romans 12, it says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the gifts. And so we have to realize that, you know, Jay sings. I preach, Ginger has a lot of creative gifts, Aaron has a lot of creative gifts. We don't all have the same gifts, mm -hmm. but they're not our gifts. Right, yeah. They're really gifts that God has given us, mm -hmm. so we don't need to compare ourselves with one another. Yes, we want to use our gifts, but gifts are given, fruit is not given. Mm -hmm. The seed of fruit is given, but it has to grow. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, um, humility is a fruit that only grows under trial. Oh, you can't, that's the truth. You can't. <laughs> or, 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 comes again. I'm sorry. Patience. I'm sorry I had it wrong. Patience. Patience, oh, no. yeah. it comes from a Greek word that says you. it only grows under yeah. trial. And that's yeah. why people don't ever want to pray for patience because no, they know if they pray for it. patience, you'll get a problem yeah. mm -hmm. that you have to solve. I actually had and, that on, on the way here today. <laughs> Why is that? That whenever we talk about something, yes. we're going to start getting yes. absolutely tempted or tried or just to, just God saying, are you actually going to do this? Or are you just going right. to talk about it to somebody yeah. else? Yeah. So I had two people pull out in front of me today on my way to work so hard that I had to slam on the brakes. Everything went flying to the front of the car. You know, the first time you're like, okay, thank you, God. The second time you're like, what is going on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so trying that patience, I'll tell you, I, and I'll be honest, I, I did not pass with flying colors. You didn't pass. <laughs> no, do, we, do we have to go back and talk I, about patience again? I, well... <laughs> I'll just keep working on it personally. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a big thing. But I think, I think all point. of us... We'll work on all of them yeah. yeah, at different times in our life. I thought it was so interesting when you talk about that, how the fruit is what is most important. That's what we need to focus on. When you look at scriptures, that's what Jesus is teaching us to do. He's not... He's not telling me here, Aaron, how, here is how you be a more creative person at your job. He cares, and I can find scripture to help me be a leader, but he cares more about the fruit in my life and teaching me to be a person after his own heart, not mm -hmm. here's how to do your job. Yeah. I think it's so powerful how you just talked about, like, we've all, I've heard this all my life about gifts come without repentance. Like, mm -hmm. you can get a gift, like, whomever, because, you know, you see people that you know are doing awful things in the world and they're just so gifted yeah. to do certain things. It's like, how did they? But you have to remind yourself, like, <laughs> you know, how did they get to do it like that? Like, you know, and, and I'm like this. And so, but not comparing the gifts, mm -hmm. but also understanding that the gift is that. It's the actual word. It's a gift. It was given from God. But the fact that fruit is to cultivate that, that is really our responsibility. Yeah. It's really our responsibility to really do that and, and practice that those bookends of love and self-control. A lot of times, if you notice, though, people who have real strong gifts that put them in the public eye, mm -hmm. if they don't have fruit, if they don't treat people good, 
many, many times they end up failing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And their lives fall apart. Very yeah. publicly. And I know God, God spoke to me when my ministry started getting bigger and I was on TV and we were having thousands of people come to the meetings. And he said, I want you to always remember that however many people you can help, that's exactly how many you can hurt. Wow, mm-hmm. that's really good. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the more people you're in front of, the more responsibility you have to make sure that you're living the life, not just telling other people yeah. how to live the life. I wrote a book recently called Loving People That Are Hard in Love. A couple of weeks ago, I had an occasion to get really mad at somebody, and uh, I was mad for maybe three hours, and then I remembered my book. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot to help you with that. <laughs> I wrote a book about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, I have to forgive. Yeah. And, you know, if you talk about, this is what I think. I think that love really is how you treat people. Yeah. It's, it's giving, it's, it's kindness, it's gentleness, mm-hmm. it's humility. It's really all the rest of the Spirit. So I talk about yeah. them like bookends. All the fruit of the Spirit come out of love, but they're held in place by self-control. Mm-hmm. That's so yeah. good. You know, That's love would require me to be humble, but if I don't feel like being humble, then I need self-control yeah. Yeah. to do what I feel. And I really would love to see people study the fruit of the Spirit more because I think it is extremely important. I mean, yeah. when Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Yep. That's what he mm-hmm. said. I mean, we're the only Jesus that people are going to see. Right. I think when in your clip you said this, and then saying that again, I think one thing that stands out to me is this is where we as Christians are not doing our job in the world right now because people are so angry and upset and things are so polarized and there's you are not seeing Christians act by their fruit. Mm-hmm. We no. are just as guilty of name calling and mm-hmm. treating people poorly. But if we were to do what Christ has called us to do as the body of Christ and act like the fruit, what would our world look like right now? Yeah. That doesn't mean the heart issues are going to go away, but wow, we could have some really good conversations and and be should Actually, if we would have been acting like we should have all along, we probably wouldn't have the situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's good. That we have in the world right now. Yeah. And that, yeah. That's always been my pet peeve, I guess. God has really called me to help people not just know, know Christ and be born again, but to live the life yeah. that He wants them to live. Yeah. And that requires spiritual maturity, and spiritual maturity requires self-control mm-hmm. and the fruit of the Spirit is a big part of that. You will know them by their fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we are God's representatives. The Bible says that He makes His appeal to the world through us. And I think it's 2 yeah. Corinthians 5.20. So just think about that. He's making His appeal to the world through us. Yeah. And so I love it when I don't even have to ask somebody if they're a Christian. Yeah. If I can tell they are by their behavior. And yeah. that really does start with love. It does. Like you mm-hmm. said, it, it, it kind of is all of those other things rolled up into what love is. And and I'm so grateful that the Bible describes all of these things for us and, and equips us in a way if we if we choose to use it. Like the, the love chapter, first Corinthians thirteen, talks about the fact that love is patient, love is kind. Mm-hmm. It right. mm-hmm. it takes all those other fruits of the spirit and and love is the foundation of all of it. So let let me ask you all this. When when love is hard to find in your life, when love is hard to come by, how do you stir it up? What do you guys do? Well, I've studied it so much now because I did things wrong for a lot of years, and I was an unhappy Christian, and Christians should not be unhappy. Mm. We should be the happiest people, the most content yeah, people right. on the face of the earth. And I was not content, and I was not happy, and... It's interesting if you really ask God a question, if, you're, if you really want the answer, he'll give you one. Mm-hmm. And I asked the Lord one day, why am I so unhappy? And he said, you're selfish. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and, an answer. you know, that yeah. love is not self-seeking. Yeah. Love is all about trusting God to take care of you while you take care of other people. So I've studied love so much that I, it's, it's been a priority for me for a a long, long time, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean that I always hit it 100%, but I know, I think you have to know the importance of it, and if you really know the importance of anything, you're more likely to do it, whether you feel like it or not, Yeah, yeah. than if you just 
If it's just, a, you know, we love everything. We love ice cream. We love God. We love church. We love our shoes, you know. <laughs> but there's, there's a difference in the agape love. Yeah. He's calling us to love as he loves. Yeah. And every one of those fruit we see in God's character. He's kind. Mm-hmm. He's gentle. You know, he, he's for all those things yeah. that love is. So he's not asking us to do anything that Jesus didn't come mm-hmm. and do. Yeah. And not only that, he helps us do it if we yeah. Yeah. cry out to him. You know, when I had that thing happen a couple of weeks ago, it was like, because I know now how important it is to forgive. I mean, I know it. I've taught on it so much, preached on it so much, studied it so much, wrote so many books on it, read so many <laughs> books on it. It's like, really, the Word of God will save you. Yeah. It says in James that the Word of God will save your soul. Mm-hmm. And the Word of God will change you and it will save you. But it's not, you can't just hear it for 20 minutes on Sunday morning. You have to be a diligent student mm-hmm. of the Word of God. I'm yeah. working on a little project right now called 40 Things the Word of God Does for You. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing, but it can't, you have to know it by revelation. Yeah. And, and you have to learn to meditate on the Word of God. And so... Yeah. And I just pray that people would understand that, that if, if, you, if you would take 30 minutes diligently every day and study the Word, and then maybe another 30 minutes throughout the day meditating on the Word, and meditate just means to roll over and over in your mind. And I tell people, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Mm-hmm. And only you meditate on the Word of God. Well, like yeah. Philippians 4, 6 is my go-to place when I get anxious or worried. Mm-hmm. Immediately, I'll start meditating on that Scripture. And so I think if people are finding it hard to do, they need to either get their Bible out and look up the scriptures if they don't know them, or mm-hmm. if they've studied it enough, they will know them, and they'll. Yeah, the Holy Spirit on. brings yeah. them to your mind. It's yeah. like they pop up when you need them. I, yeah. I did what you said too, uh, and I think it's so important is when we're missing something in particular in our life to to study it in the Bible, to look for it, and mm-hmm. and to ask God for more of it. And I remember a time where. Uh, you know how the world is, and I just wasn't seeing a lot of love around me. And I was saying, God, you know, where where is all the love mm-hmm. that you're filling the world with? And I remember very clearly, like you did, I, I remember just this feeling of you start sharing more of it, and you'll find more of it around you. Right. And that it, it comes down so much to what we do in our own life when we're looking for it outside of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. God wants to start in us. Yeah, I've noticed whenever I'm feeling like I'm not receiving it or if I'm feeling like I'm not really giving it out, mm-hmm. I immediately go to the fact that somehow I'm disconnected from Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there's a disconnection yeah. because I, I usually stop and like reflect on the fact that God is love. Right. And then, like... It's that simple. Yeah. Like it, God is love, and if if I'm feeling any lack in myself, or if I'm feeling like nobody loves me, or you know, like or I'm not, I don't like anybody. Like honestly, you know, like <laughs> then I'm like, I'm I, so I'm not connected to 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 God. Yeah. I'm not connected to yeah. Him like I need to. So I will like pull back, si- you know, meditate on the Scripture, meditate on His love, and ask Him simply just to fill me up. Don't you think joy is the same way? Yeah. As one of the fruit of the Spirit? If, yeah. When we don't have joy, it's exactly what you yeah. said also. We need to reconnect with Him. It's, it's a disconnection because the, all of the fruit, are they're Him. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's Him. And if I'm lacking in any of them, it means that I am lacking Him. And and that's the harsh reality is like, sure. no matter how much I tote around I'm a Christian, which honestly these days, what I'm finding out with a lot of people that I've been interacting with after going through these this past season of my life because I've been very different with how I've approached people. Like I'm way less judgmental. I'm way less, I'm way less Jesus pushing, you know, I'm way less that. And I really want the fruit to, to show like, and, and so a lot of that means I've shut up a lot. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't say much of nothing, but I let people talk to me. I let, and, and what I'm noticing is that people are gravitating more to me. Like, I don't have to tell them I'm a Christian because honestly, the word Christian these days, a lot of people don't like it. Like, it's a deflector to people. And so the fact that I, I'm learning how to cultivate the joy and cultivate the love 
man, in this season where I felt the least amount of love, I'm like, God, let your love just show through me. That so many people are drawing towards me that need love. I'm like, huh? What about me? Yeah. Okay, I hear you. I know. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, what about me feeling it? But like God is like teaching me how to love people, and I'm getting so much more fulfillment from that. That cultivation and being able to give sure. it out to people. Mm-hmm. I think I had a similar experience to you last year about the same the same topic of love. I was praying and every, the world was on fire and like God, what are you doing here? What show me something? I need to know what you're still here, right? And so he brought the word love up to me, and so I just went through the Gospels and just read all about what does what is Jesus saying about love and how is he acting that out and. He does it just like you're saying, Jay. He's going and sitting with the least of these, and he's not judging, and he's not um, criticizing, and mm-hmm. he's so humble yeah. and gracious, and not. He doesn't have all these words to say because <laughs> I kept saying, thinking like I need to have paragraphs of paragraphs of encouragement <laughs> to tell people, and he just was with them where they were. But he's he's also so honest. Yeah, yeah. You know when when somebody's yes. not doing what they need to do. He will let them know mm-hmm. and in a few words, really well chosen, very straightforward, but still in love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the way he communicates because yeah. it's not like whatever you say goes. No. It's this is truth, so I will stand up for what yeah. is right. But it's not I don't want to make anybody upset. No. But I'll still love you through this. Yes. Yeah. And I so that's kind of what I learned the past year. But I love the verse that you shared, First Corinthians. Love feels really big to me. Like that's a really big concept to grasp. Mm-hmm. So I like that one because it says, here's what that means. Here's yeah. your definition of love as like a checklist. So are you being this? No. Are you being that? <laughs> no. I got one on the list. So let's try you for another one today. But that's kind of a practical thing I like to do. Yeah. yeah. I think if a person did nothing but focus on love for the rest of their life. Oh, we'd be busy. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't think you would have any other sin problems. Mm. I totally agree. Yeah. And yeah. Because if you if you walked in line, God doesn't sin, mm. and He is love. Mm-hmm. And so I think that every every sin somewhere is because you're not paying attention mm-hmm. to love. Yeah. Well, we mentioned joy a little bit. I I love joy. Joy is just one of those really important things. And sometimes when we're... So far down, joy just seems unattainable. But we have to remember that God doesn't talk about joy the same way He talks about happiness mm-hmm. or anything temporary. It 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 does come from the seed that He gives us, and then we develop it from there. So from there, going to kindness. Kindness is a hard one in the world today, too, don't you think? Yeah. People yeah. are pretty pretty crude and rude today. Somebody told me recently said you need to you need to do a seminar just on manners. Mm. I mean, it's like people out in the world today, just, they are so, they just don't have manners. I mean, some of the stories that people tell me who work with the the public, I mean, a couple of my granddaughters work at, at a fast food restaurant, and they said, you would not believe the way people can act if you just don't give them enough ketchup packets. Yeah. It's oh, wow. like, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like every, people are just ready to explode. And just, it's not that hard to be a little bit kind to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think oh. yeah, I think kindness is a lost art, somewhat because, even though it's a fruit, but I'm saying it's just it's kind of lost in this culture because 
we we're used to getting things quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this is like a very fast paced world. And so that's where the, I think a lot of patience lacks and a mm-hmm. lot of kindness because everybody's just on the go. And mm-hmm. so one thing that I, I tried to keep instilling in my mm-hmm. daughter, just be kind, like yeah. say thank you, say right. please. Those mm-hmm. are like lost things that I don't think. And I grew up in a time, my parents, if I didn't say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, <laughs> yes, sir, no, sir, to any adult, you know, like I would get in trouble. And so I raised my daughter the same way. She still says it. Now people get offended because they don't want, you think I'm old? Like, it's no, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to respect, you know? Like, But I think that just that art of kindness, like I still do it. I don't care. I'm like, thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's just, it's just kindness. Mm-hmm. It's just being gentle and kind. Yeah. yeah. When love, joy, and self-control are so evident in our lives that people can actually see it without us even telling them that we're Christians, that's what powerfully draws people to Christ. Those things are so important and we need to have that fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And today we have a very helpful audio teaching for you called Understanding Gifts, versus fruit. It's all talking about the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it is absolutely free. All you have to do is visit us online or give us a call to request it and you'll receive your digital audio version of this so that you can listen to it anywhere, anytime that you like.